In this video, we have two goals. First, we want to, you to understand what we mean by an indeterminate form. And second, we'd like you to uh, see how L'Hopital's rule can, can deal with the special indeterminate form um, that we'll see. Uh, that we'll t discuss here is zero over zero. We'll discuss other indeterminate forms later. All right, first of all, let's take a look at something that is not an indeterminate form. Three over two is not an indeterminate form. Consider these two examples. The limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 1 over x, and the limit as x approaches 0 of 3 cosine of x over e, e to the x plus 1. Notice in the first limit, the numerator, x plus 1, approaches 3 as x approaches 2, while the denominator in that limit, x, approaches 2. So we'd say that this is approaching the form 3 over 2. This is approaching 3 over 2. And the limit as x approaches 2 of that the rational expression x plus 1 over x is the, is the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 1 over the limit as x approaches 2 of x is 3 over 2. So the result is 3 over 2. All right, if I look at the limit as x approaches 0 of 3 cosine of x over e to the x plus 1, in the numerator, as x approaches 0, 3 cosine of x approaches 3 times 1 cosine of, of, of 0 is 1, and, and so that's approaching 3. The denominator is approaching, well, e to the 0 plus 1, e to the 0 is 2, or excuse me, is 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. So the entire fraction is approaching 3 over 2. Notice what we can say. We can make a general statement. Anytime the numerator approaches 3 in a, in, a, in a fractional expression and the denominator approaches 2, the entire fraction is going to approach 3 halves. So 3 over 2 is not an indeterminate form. As soon as we see something's approaching 3 over 2, we know, we know what the, the entire expression is approaching. On the other hand, 0 over 0 is an indeterminate form. Consider these two examples. The limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, and the limit as x approaches 0 of, x, of sine of x over x, assuming x is in radians. Well, of course, in the first ex expression, as x approaches 2, x squared over 4, x squared minus 4, excuse me, the numerator approaches 0, and the denominator, x minus 2, approaches 0. So this is approaching 0 over 0. Numerator is approaching 0, denominator is approaching 0. But, as we, s we saw earlier in, in chapter 1, uh, by factoring the numerator and canceling the common factor, all right, this limit the limit of the entire expression approached 4. The limit of the entire expression approached 4. In, in the second expression, the, the second limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x, the numerator sine approaches 0. All right, sine of 0 is 0. The denominator x approaches 0. So this is approaching a 0 over 0 form. All right, but the entire fraction approached 1. So notice, unlike 3 over 2, if the numerator approaches 0 and the denominator approaches 0, we can get different results. We can, that's why we call 0 over 0 an indeterminate form. The result of that limit of the, of the fractional form is not determined by the, by the individual limits, by the, the, the limit of the numerator and limit of the denominator, all right, as it was in 3 over 2. All right, now, in this case, all right, there's a general technique that we can use for dealing with indeterminate forms. Before, I mean, if you think back to the two limits we had, the first one we saw we did by factoring and, and uh, algebraic techniques. The other one, if you remember, our argument was geometric in nature. And so, so the, the, the thing is, there's completely different techniques, but here's a technique that would work for both of them. All right, and this is called L'Hopital's Rule. Okay. And it says, suppose that f and g 
are differentiable functions on an open interval containing a, except that they might not be differentiable at a itself. All right, there might be a little problem at a. All right, further assume that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is zero and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is zero. So notice it's when I consider the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x, <coughs> That's approaching the indeterminate form 0 over 0. The numerator is approaching 0, denominator is approaching 0. Uh, it, but what L'Hopital's rule was, goes on to say that if the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x exists or is positive or negative infinity, then this limit that's approaching the indeterminate form 0 over 0, the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x, is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x. Okay, let's take a look at the example. Let's look at the first, the first of those limits. Remember, this limit turned out to be 4. All right, but let's, let's instead of doing it uh, with uh, algebraic techniques, let's apply L'Hopital's rule. Notice we're approaching the form 0 over 0. So because we're approaching that form 0 over 0, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And L'Hopital's rule says that this will be the same thing, assuming this other limit exists, as the limit as x approaches 2 of the derivative with respect to x of x squared minus 4 over the derivative with respect to x of x minus 2. Now, now be careful here. Notice some students all right, think that we're taking the derivative of this function. Well, we're not. We're not taking the derivative of that function. All right, we're treating the numerator as a separate function and taking the derivative of that numerator function. We're treating the denominator as a separate function and taking the derivative of that denominator. And this would be, of course, the limit as x approaches 0 of, well, the limit, the derivative of x squared minus 4 is 2x over the derivative of x minus 2 is 1. So notice this would be the limit as x approaches, oops, 2 instead of 0. Sorry about that. Of 2x over 1. And that would be 2 times 2 or 4. So we get the very same limit, but this time using L'Hopital's rule. Again, two things to keep in mind. One, we take the limit of the numerator by itself and the limit of the denominator by itself. Second, in order to be using L'Hopital's rule, this had to be approaching a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. So again, two things to keep in mind. It had to be approaching an indeterminate form and take the, lim the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator separately. Okay, let's take a look at the second example, all right? The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x. If you remember, when we talked about this limit, we had to, <clears throat> excuse me, we had to, we dealt with this in a geometric way. We looked at this geometrically as a, areas of a triangles and a sector and such, if you remember. All right, now, but again, this was approaching this 0 over 0 indeterminate form. You have to be sure that that's true. And so then this will be the same thing as the limit as x approaches 0 of the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of sine of x, treat sine of x, the numerator, as a separate function, take its derivative, divided by the derivative of the denominator, the derivative of x. And so notice this would be the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x, the derivative of sine, over 1, the derivative of x. And as x approaches 0, cosine of x approaches 1, so this limit would be 1, just as we've, we've, we, we've seen before, okay? There's another limit back then that we've proven, all right, and basically we used trigonometric identities to prove this limit from the previous one. All right, that was the limit as theta approaches 0 of cosine of theta minus 1 over theta. Notice as theta approaches 0, maybe I better write this down below, the limit as theta approaches 0 of cosine of theta minus 1 is, well, cosine approaches 1, so this becomes 1 minus 1, that's 0. And, of course, the limit as theta approaches 0 of theta is 0. So the numerator is approaching 0, the denominator is approaching 0. This is approaching 
that 0 over 0 in determinate form. You have to check that before you can apply L'Hopital's rule. And then L'Hopital's rule says that this should be the same thing as the limit as theta approaches um, 0 of the derivative, this time with respect to theta. Theta is the variable here. Cosine of theta minus 1 over the derivative with respect to theta of theta. Okay. Now, let's see. The, this is going to be the limit as theta approaches 0. Well, what's the derivative of cosine of theta minus 1? The derivative of cosine is negative sine of theta. Derivative of 1 is 0. And then the derivative of theta in the denominator is 1. With, again, the derivative of theta with respect to theta. So this is going to be equal to the opposite of sine of 0. And so that would be the opposite of 0. And that's 0. And this is what we had gotten for this limit before. This was one of the limits we used to derive the formula um, for the derivative of sine of x and the derivative of cosine of x. And notice we had gotten this limit to be 0 before. <clears throat> Excuse me, but we've done all three of these limits this time in this one tech in with this one technique. We hadn't had to rely on different techniques. The before the first limit relied on algebraic techniques, the second on a geometric argument, the third on trigonometric um, techniques using trig identities. But here, L'Hopital's rule allows us to treat them in all of the same way.